Next up, we have an industry presentation by Mr. Abhilash Sondarajan, founder and CEO, Privia Sapien. We welcome you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. I am Abhilash Sondarajan, founder and CEO of a company called Privacy Sapien. We are a privacy engineering and responsible AI company. Uh, just now, we have um, you know, Mr. Sriram presenting about uh, cybersecurity on cloud and DSCI and how they are incubating startups. We are one of the startups from um, DSCI, incubated in DSCI. We have been working with them for three years. Amazing experience. So um, today we are going to speak about DPDP Act, Data Protection Bill, and as an organization, what is the responsibility that we have towards citizens and their data? And this is a very, very important problem, not just in India, but across the globe. Recently, Elon Musk told that AI is going to be a civilizational level problem, right? How do you solve this problem? How do you control AI? This is a very fundamental problem, especially a very big problem for regulators. Because the first level, they call it as attack 1.0, attack 2.0. Attack 1.0 is social media. Social, even now the regulations uh, or regulators don't know how to overcome the social media problem. Now, already large language models have come. Chat GPT has already come, which have studied all data across the world. How do you control these? These become very big challenges, especially for government entities like state government organizations or central government entities, which is collecting population scale data. It becomes a very foundational problem in controlling, protecting citizens' data while delivering benefits for citizens. So this is a very nuanced problem. This is the next level of evolution of cybersecurity. So what is the difference between security and privacy? Security is pre-access to data and privacy is post-access to data. So how do you protect after giving data to somebody? How do you protect the data after you have given the data? Right? This is the foundational problem. This is a new field and there are new set of technologies coming called privacy enhancing technologies. And these are very foundational for organizations across the globe. Recently, we went to Saudi Arabia. We are collaborating with Saudi Arabia government where they have a regulating authority and we are collaborating with the regulating authority. We are working with Indian government as well, Ministry of IT. We are uh, you know, working with DSCI and NASCOM in sharing our feedback for multiple regulations which are coming. Even the DPDP, we provided our feedback. Now with DA and other responsible AI, we are also participating. So, um, so this is how the ecosystem is evolving. What kind of solutions do you need to solve these industry requirements, regulatory requirements, which are very horizontal? Sir, this is, okay. yeah. So the regulations, so data and AI are very integral part of the solution. You cannot separate data and AI from each other. And when you are looking at data, there are regulations across the globe, starting from DPDP in India, GDPR in Europe, CPRA in US, and PDPL in Saudi, and penalties are very, very high. In India, the penalty can be up to 250 crore per instance, right, which is very high. So how do you solve this problem? How do you ensure that you are in line with these regulatory requirements? So if we just look into DPDP, what are the areas in which you have penalties? For example, if you fail to safeguard customer data, the penalty can be up to 250 crore. If an organization has not done, uh, if an organization has not done data protection impact assessment on data, then it can be up to 150 crore. If there is children's data involved and there is, it is enough safeguard is not provided for children's data, it can be a penalty of 200 crore or breach of any other kind. For example, if you have not collected consent properly and you have not used the data only as per the consent, it can attract penalties separately. Now, these are huge obligations for organizations. So, how to take care of it is a very fundamental requirement. So, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. So privacy by design is a very important requirement to solve this problem. So traditionally, there was something called privacy by checklist. Privacy by checklist is traditional techniques like tokenization, masking in data, which does not give you a guarantee of re-identification. For example, you may tokenize a name, but you may be the only person with a specific date of birth with a specific disease in a specific zip code. That will result in re-identification of you much more easier than 
you know the traditional method so how do you solve this so to solve this there are new set of technologies emerging called privacy enhancing technologies or privacy 3.0 technologies so there are technologies like differential privacy anonymization uh, you know using um, federated learning uh, differential privacy and also things like federated learning with differential privacy etc and on the cryptography side there are techniques like fully homomorphic encryption uh, secure multi party compute these are the solutions which are enabling organizations to unlock data without violating privacy and these are like called privacy enhancing technologies and these are technologies with which organizations across the globe are trying to solve the problem um so what are we doing in this so how do you solve this data problem and the aa problem so at the first level at the data level an organization has to understand what is the risk in data that's where the whole thing starts so at the foundation how do you do privacy risk assessment how do you do privacy threat modeling uh, is a very important part with that we start and get into how to mitigate it now you have let us say it's like a doctor right you first do a blood test and understand what is the you know risk in a specific patient scenario what is causing that problem once you understand the risk then you have to give medication to solve the problem so from a privacy perspective first you understand the risk with privacy threat modeling then you mitigate the risk with privacy enhancing technologies this is the data layer then comes the aa layer where you have to unlock the data for various aa purposes in this there are there is a new concept called ai trism which gartner has come up with and it is also being spoken by even the bletchley park confederation which happened recently in the ai safety summit in uk where all almost 26 countries participated the safe ai concept is user safety model security and trustworthy ai practices so you have to start with the data layer to get to the next one sorry uh, excuse me yeah so we are building different products at at different layers to enable an organization for example let us say an organization a state government organization is collecting data from multiple sources like healthcare information or uh, subsidy information you may have to use the data but at the same time protect privacy of citizens so how do you ensure that you use the data without violating people's privacy or use not use the data beyond the consent these become very critical especially when you are using ai you are uh, using the data for deciding benefit schemes etc it becomes a very big challenge where people may not consent for certain scenarios um, in which case how do you use the data how do you link data between different departments how to use the data how to connect the data how to use the data it becomes a very important challenge um, so we enable organizations in this yeah next slide please yeah so data can be put into a spectrum starting from pii to pseudonymized to anonymized to synthetic now the more the data is on the pii side it is more riskier and as you move the data to the other sites the regulatory obligation and the risk reduces significantly for example when you move the data from pii data to an anonymized data or synthetic data the risk in the data significantly reduces and when you make it anonymous or synthetic it goes beyond the regulatory requirement for example when you anonymize the data it does not fall into dpdp act it is considered it is exempt from dpdp because it does not be reidentifiable to a individual user it is significantly anonymized and this is not traditional anonymization this is mathematical grade anonymization so how do you first even understand this which is done with our product called privacy x-ray which is a privacy threat modeling product so it does different kinds of new age privacy attacks on data like singling out attack linkage attack inference attack on data gives you a unified risk score so your entire data pipeline becomes privacy aware so based on this for example you can build your devops rules on your data pipeline saying if the risk is more than this don't allow this flow to a third party consultant or you don't allow this data to go to you know work from home kind of scenarios you ensure that the data only resides within your ecosystem things like this so you can build policies on top of it even torizon helps in creating anonymized data uh, cryptosphere helps in creating pseudonymous data and data twin using generative ai helps you create synthetic data so this is the spectrum and we are working on solutions to solve these problems um, so this is how this gets integrated into your data ecosystem you have your database or your cloud ecosystem where privacy x-ray connects to it this can be an on prem deployment where it can connect to it and give you a risk score of 0 to 100 for each of your data in your data catalog 
So for every data, data source uh, that you have, it can give you a privacy risk score, which is mathematically derived. And this can be used by your DPO or CISO to take decisions in line with regulatory obligations. So once you know this risk, then how do you unlock the data for a specific scenario? For example, we have uh, patients data in the state. You want to give it to an insurance company so that the insurance benefit can be passed on to the citizens or they can come up with better premiums which are based on data. But you don't have consent to actually give the data which becomes a fundamental problem. So you can anonymize the data so that you capture the patterns in the data without actually making it personally identifiable, then give it to an insurance company or a pharma company. Thus, you can accelerate product development and uh, better insurance premiums for your state citizens without violating the regulatory obligations, which becomes very foundational. Similarly, let us say you have application teams which are developing you know, multiple applications within and you cannot give citizen data to them, which becomes a problem. So you can use data twin to create synthetic data and with this artificial data, you can give it to your development and testing teams so that they don't get access to the original data and solve the problem. Then similarly for Cryptosphere, when you are doing cryptographic data collaboration between multiple parties, where you want to link data sets of multiple types and make integrated decisions, it becomes a big challenge. So when you do Cryptosphere, cryptographic data collaboration, it enables you to connect, let us say there is an other ID, there is a Samagra ID, there is multiple IDs. You can connect all this without exposing those IDs and make decisions collaborative between multiple departments without violating privacy. It becomes a huge value proposition. Similarly, when you are building large language models, for example, chat GPT or other systems and you are integrating with it, how do you put guardrails? For example, a citizen may ask, let's say you are connecting your state department's chatbot with chat GPT. Now, when your citizen puts some queries, let's say I have this disease, I'm trying to contact, I'm not getting this benefit, etc. All this information are going to, let's say Microsoft or OpenAI, which is a big challenge. Right? Because customer tomorrow has the right to ask where and all has this data gone, who and all have used this data, what purpose for which they have used this data. It becomes a big challenge. So you need a guardrail around your large language models usages in your ecosystem or people are also building large language models locally. But the problem is when you are building la lo large language models locally, you may be training with your own data. For example, let us say a patient's data from the state, you are training that with the model. But the model may start speaking about it with the customers and people may attack those models. Uh, this is like a child, large language model is like a child. It does not know what is a good touch and a bad touch. So people may abuse it and extract sensitive information from the model, which may become a big problem. So how do you put guardrails around it is what we do. So privacy x-ray helps you understand the risk in data when you are using the data, makes a recommendation for you how to mitigate the risk and enable you to share data with downstream parties. Um, then Event Horizon helps in anonymizing data in different gradients. Like if you want to give, as we were speaking about the earliest use case earlier, where you want to give healthcare data to a insurance company, it may be at a higher granularity. You may give the same information to, let us say, uh, uh, you know, central government, which can be at a slightly different gradient. Or you may give the same data to a pharma company, which can be anonymized further. So you can choose different grades of anonymization and anonymize the data. Similarly, when you want to integrate multiple IDs, let us say Aadhaar, Samagra and multiple IDs, and you want to take collaborated decision making without violating privacy, you can use Cryptosphere and enable, share the data to an external party without actually exposing the identity of individuals. Then Data Twin is, uh, you know, create synthetic data for application or other developments without actually sharing with them original data. Then this is private GPT, which is when you are using large language models, it can sit in line, understand the prompt which is going near real time, annotate the risk in the prompt, summarize the risk in the prompt and even create synthesized privacy preserved prompts. For example, it will say that okay, these are the issues that we have identified in the prompt and uh, the, there is information risk, privacy risk in the prompt. Do you want to change it? It will also make a recommendation of how this prompt can be created with a privacy preserved prompt structure and now this can go to a large language model. The use case is like for example in your website you are putting a chatbot and citizens are going to use the chatbot and it is connected to chat GPT at the back end. How do you privacy preserve it, use it the right way is sort of a use case. Um, so this is how the products come together in an organization's ecosystem. Prepare you for being privacy compliant not just in India but across the globe. We have won multiple awards, uh, including Niti Aayog's Atman Bharat Challenge Award, multiple DSCIS awards, 
uh, we just we just graduated one of the first companies globally to graduate out of um, Saudi Arabia's pet sandbox, um, and we are working with organizations in India and across the globe. Um, this is our so we take uh, awareness creation very very seriously. We have a community called Pere Community Privacy Engineering Responsible AI Community. You can probably scan this or you can visit our booth. Uh, you can join this community. We keep sharing a lot of interesting information on developments. So. You know, we are looking forward to join hands with you and um, you know build a privacy-preserved and responsible AI future for humanity. Thank you. Uh, so, Abhilash, can uh, like in a nutshell, can you just uh, explain in a minute for a government entity? There are a lot of department, uh, you know, officers are also sitting. So, what can be a very small journey for the privacy, because? Now, DPDP Act is already in uh, force, rules are being framed. So, how uh, very small, in a very small nutshell, what can be the steps for a department? Uh, I think Abhilash, you are there tomorrow also? Yeah. Yes. So, I just like to add, I think what you can, you can think over it because tomorrow you will be addressing the audience is going to be, you know, they're most largely going to be the senior government officers and government officers only. So, what I, uh, Abhijit has asked you, you can think over it, you can give some spontaneous answer, but later you can think about it and your presentation can accordingly, you can, yeah, if you so want, you can reorient. I will show that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. To answer the question, sir, um, what, how do you design the journey, privacy journey? Uh, any, even it, it can be a healthcare sector, right? You cannot mitigate what you cannot see. So, the first step in the journey starts with seeing the risk. Um, so it's like blood test, you start with a prick and then see what is the sugar level in your blood and once you know the sugar level, you start the mitigation. Same with privacy, any organization should start with understanding the risk and what are the purposes of the data which is going to be used downstream, purpose A, B, C, D. Now for these four purposes, do you have consent and for the, if you have consent, then it can flow with corresponding controls. If you don't have consent, how do you privacy preserve and allow data? That's all. Understand the risk, allow the data flow based on consent or legal purpose or privacy protection. If you do this, it is pretty much in line. But doing this is very difficult. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Abhilash Sundarajan, founder and CEO of Privia Sapien. Uh, now I would like to call uh, Mr. Abhijit Agarwal, IES Managing Director, MPSED, MPSEDC, uh, to please give a small token of appreciation to Mr. Abhilash Sundarajan. Thank you.